The Acolyte Episode 7 is Episode 3 all over again. It's just a repeat of what we saw there from a Jedi's perspective. But in this case, Leslie Headland thought it was a good idea making the heroes of this franchise, the brave Jedi Knights, into antagonists. In the process, losing millions of viewers and more real Star Wars fans are caring even less. If you're following my reviews, I did not do an episode 6 review because that was a huge boredom of an episode. It was a big deal because we saw the Sith guy taking off his shirt and everybody went crazy. But there was no story there. There was nothing of value there. It, this show is a complete piece of crap, garbage. None of this is Star Wars. This is Leslie Hanlon's fantasies, twisted, perverted fantasies using the name of Star Wars in this show and I could care less about that episode and there wasn't much to review there besides just calling out all the same BS. Now in this one they try to be a little bit more of the Jedi here and how they're tr she's trying to make them into villains and trying to sympathize for the space the lesbian space which is at that and it just comes off as ridiculous and it's just episode three it's episode three what we saw with the uh, with osha and may when they were young and they were in the coats with the space witches it's that whole episode with a lot of repeat scenes maybe different angles but this time from soul and the other jedi's perspective and we actually do get some a little bit more of what soul is like and it actually doesn't improve his character makes him look bad as a jedi knight so this entire episode was another struggle and pain to just watch and just follow through because it's stuff we already saw in that episode and episode three is not exactly the most of this series is not exactly the most exciting thing it was very cringe worthy it's not like something as an example let's say back to the future 2 where marty goes back to 1955 and he sees himself from the first movie trying to fix uh the thing with his parents and he's in hill valley 1955 that's a lot more entertaining but this you have to make us go through another painful episode a horribly written episode a boring episode and when you add another Another boring episode on top of it this is going to be a complete disaster of boredom the jedi here let's say helen what the what the writers want to do here is make the jedi look really really bad they're the ones that are not emotionally stable all of these jedi soul torben and uh Trinity, just call it Trinity. I don't even know her name. They're they're emotionally unstable. They're making rash, impulsive decisions. In fact, I'd say in this case, Trinity here is the one that's a little bit more uh, rational. Of course, it's going to be Trinity here, the girl boss. is going to put all the men in line, and they're going to make sure that she they follow all the rules, and they're uh, acting accordingly and everything like that as a Jedi. And she seems to be the most stoic one and so forth. And it's really ridiculous. And so is the one that is... Uh, more of a he acts more like a child here and he's obsessed with getting uh osha's uh padawan a little bit too obsessed not even qui-gon jinn in episode one was that obsessed with anakin he was more interested and kind of curious as to why anakin is so strong in the forest and he actually sympathized with him and he felt bad for him enough that he kind of manipulated the dice with waddle to help free him in this case so is acting like a child like I feel like she has to be my Padawan. She has to be my Padawan. I got to do something about it. And then Trinity here, of course, is the one, the level-headed one, and telling him, no, 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 you, you you need to calm down. Don't let your emotions kind of uh, cloud your judgment. Uh, is it, is, are you sure it's not you who wants this and not the other way around? So it's really ridiculous. It, it, she's basically lecturing him, and he's an adult. He might even be older than her, and it doesn't make any sense. And then you have Torben here. We have a scene of how he kind of, in episode 3, had that mind manipulation where actually one of the witches here, the mothers, was actually in his head and was kind of like seducing him and telling him, I can give you what you need. The issue with this is that later on, and spoiler warning, there's going to be spoilers in this review, is that later on when they're fighting, and I guess Konaka, it, this evil speech because they are evil, this evil lesbian space which turns into a cloud of dust and basically like enters Kelnaka here and she takes over his mind and he becomes like evil for a moment. But Torben, all he does is he doesn't do anything questionably bad 
then the, you make him wonder why did he do these horrible acts or something like that. He was defending himself from the witches and even defending himself from Kaunaka. Where years later, he kills himself because he feels bad, but it doesn't make any sense in the story. It makes a complete, it's complete nonsense. It doesn't make any sense why he killed himself years later because of supposed guilt. He didn't do anything that was really that bad or wrong in this. It doesn't make any sense. I think it's just what it is. It's just them putting in the white guy that it feels bad or remorse and he takes the fall and he he's the one that sacrifices himself for the good of everybody it's just a bunch of baloney bs and so then you have torben here suddenly saying oh it all makes sense now so all we need is to get him we need to get him we need to save him and then we can go home but it feels like they were already going home another obsessed impulsive jedi right here just like soul and it, the, look, you don't. The Jedi can have character with. They can be uh, very interesting characters. Sans, there's Yoda, there's Obi Wan, there's Qui Gon Jinn, there's Mace Windu, there's even Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi and the Expanded Universe. Heck, you can even put Anakin Skywalker as kind of the opposite there. He's the one that's impulsive. He's the one that turns to Darth Vader because in George Lucas's story, there's logic. But George Lucas, even though critique is writing all you want, made Yoda, Obi Wan. Qui-Gon, Mace Windu, Luke Skywalker, all those characters interesting. And with good writing, in my opinion, there, he made he gave him wit, he gave him character, he he got good actors to play them. You can make Jedi interesting, but, but while they're also like stoic and serious and focused and that kind of thing, because we like seeing those kind of characters on the screen. We like seeing characters like the Jedi that are better than ourselves, that are put in situations where they're going to be more wise, more brave, more responsible, and that sort of thing. Sure, give them a little bit of wit, a little bit of humor, and maybe have them struggle a bit, but they're not going to be impulsive and kind of just pedestrian like they are here because we saw how that was with Anakin and Anakin turned to the dark side. Even these Jedi show qualities that Anakin, in my, in my opinion, had more nuance in. So it's really bad writing, really bad acting in comparison to what we saw in George Lucas's Star Wars and his Jedi Knights. Okay, probably one of the worst moments that I saw in this and an insult to the name Jedi here is what Sol basically did right here and where he chose one of the girls where in fact he was holding the catwalk there when in fact he should have been holding each of them with the force. They're not that heavy. He should have pick up, picked up both of them and just guided them back to where he was on the, on the cliff edge right there. Simple. Instead, he chose to hold the catwalk of the one he wanted to save and it doesn't make any sense all it does is just worsen his character worsen the title of jedi that he has and i guess kind of make us sympathize for may and all the bad things that she did kill the jedi this in my opinion i think they're doing this on purpose they're trying to make us sympathize with the villains and all this stuff and it's just reverse morality or the lack of morality in this storytelling this is all garbage this is not something that is aspiring or even heroic or Star Wars at all. This is all nihilistic bullshit. And then Saul still lies to her and tells her a lie. And then Trinity right here says that they should keep it a lie. They should tell the Jedi Council a lie. It actually retcon stuff that was in the prequels, in the Phantom Menace. It's all really stupid. And them lying and then keeping it a secret just makes it bad. It's the writers making these Jedi bad. No way in this lore, in this universe, would these Jedi lie. Would these Jedi do what they did? Would Soul choose one girl over the other? The Jedi are about protecting life. He would do the best to save both of them. If he, if he, if he had to, he would lose his life. Soul would sacrifice his life to save both of them. He would probably do something crazy like jump off that cliff, grab, catch both of them with the Force, fall to the ground to his death while holding on to them it would he would just it doesn't matter the whole you see how bad the writing is how much i how stupid I, how stupid of a thing i have to come up with to try to save the bad writing here it doesn't make any sense but the point is that all of this is garbage this is all nihilistic bs and leslie Helen is 
a horrible, horrible, the worst person that she that they could get for Star Wars because Star Wars needs its aspirational heroes. It needs to be hopeful, and instead they're doing this crap and they're doing like guys and Sith taking off their shirt and all this stuff in the last episode and lesbian space witches. This whole show is garbage perversity. That's gonna do it for the video. Thank you again for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. In the meantime, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>